and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In this great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live in you. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first lesson for the sixth Sunday after Trinity is written in the second book of Moses, known as Exodus, chapter 20. We read in Jesus' name. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or his maidservant, his dog, ox or donkey or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, O God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of Oh, man. 
turning my mic on and off. <laughs> Excuse me. The second lesson is written in St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, we begin reading at the 17th verse. Am I missing something? Okay. Jesus said, Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. 
But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you offer your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way, or he may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth. You will not get out until you have paid the last penny. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise be to you, O Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Amen. 
Our sermon text for the day is taken from the epistle lesson. We read chapter, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 11. In the name of our dear Savior, who gave his life so that we might have life everlasting. St. Paul wrote, Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him by this baptism into his death, so that just as he was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too would also walk in a new life. For if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be united with him in the likeness of his resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him to make our sinful body powerless so that we would not continue to serve sin. For the person who has died has been declared free from sin. And since we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that since Christ has been raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death no longer has control over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, also consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of our Lord, we pray. O Lord, by the power of your word, you bring to us the gifts of the Spirit, which is faith, hope, and life. Bless us today with these words. Cleanse us of all sin, and keep us unto life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, brought to life. The Bible speaks of death in several ways, but all of them involve a separation. We enter the world in spiritual death, which is separation from God because of the sin we inherited from our parents and our own selfish desires. And then, of course, we are all familiar with physical death, which is the separation of the soul from the body. This, too, is unavoidable because of sin and causes no end of grief in our world. Finally, there is eternal death, which is everlasting separation of the sinner from God in the torments of hell. And we certainly want to avoid that death at all cost. Now, most people are rather uncomfortable speaking about death, at least certain deaths. There is no good reason for me to get too deep into the insanity of the modern world when it comes to the idea of death. But it is a reality that everyone of sound mind and health deeply desires to avoid death personally. Modern medicine spends billions upon billions of dollars helping people forestall death. And even the deaths of animals grieves many people excessively. There is, however, a death that I want you to pursue based on Paul's writing in this text. For he urges us to die to sin as you live in Christ. Paul had just explained the immense riches of God's grace grace that that covers every sin. But lest some imagine that we can sin freely, he writes, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Forgiveness, faith, salvation, and eternal life come to us primarily through the gift of baptism. In baptism, we are connected to Christ Jesus' death, and it is his death that covered and paid for all the sins of the world, yours and mine included. The reason Jesus' death could pay the full redemption price for the whole world is because he is the Holy Son of God who while being perfectly without sin himself, made our sins his own as he sacrificed himself in our place so that we could truly live as God's sanctified and redeemed children who die to sin to live as you live in Christ. Paul explained, We were therefore buried with him by this baptism into his death, so that just as he was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too would also walk in in a new life. Why do you suppose the practice of burying the dead came into common usage? 
primarily, I think, to cover the stench of death and the decay that follows. For millennia, people have buried the dead bodies of people and animals alike so that the living wouldn't have to endure the stench. Likewise, being buried with Christ covers the stench of our sins, which God could never allow in his paradise. In baptism, the sweet-smelling sacrifice of the perfect Lamb of God washes away our stink. Now our walk in new God-pleasing life will finally be complete only when we walk with Jesus in heaven. Yet if we are truly now connected with the Holy Christ through baptism, could we still wallow in our former sinful ways? Those of you who do laundry, could you imagine my wife taking my white dress shirts out of the wash, bright and clean, and using them to wipe out the cat litter box? Would anyone ever take his or her most expensive garment and throw it into a hog lot to give the pigs something to play with? Yet isn't that the same type of be shameful behavior we would display if we should return to sinful ways after being brought to faith in Christ Jesus? May it never be. Now the really good news. For if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be united with him in the likeness of his resurrection. God did not unite us with his beloved son so that we would be abandoned to the grave and eventual destruction. No, just as Jesus was raised from the dead in glorified triumph by his heavenly Father to dwell in heaven everlasting, so God had the purpose in mind of of saving you into his heavenly home. For the day is coming when we and all believers in Jesus will be raised from wherever our bodies might sleep to rise through the clouds in perfect holiness, to dwell in the eternal glory of heaven. United with Jesus means a permanent connection with the Holy One of God. <clears throat> More good news. We know that our old self was crucified with him to make our sinful body powerless so that we would not continue to serve sin. For the person who has died has been declared free from sin. Even in our own courtrooms, when the perpetrator is deceased, no charges are brought against him, even if all evidence would, would prove his guilt. How much greater for us then that in God's courtroom we have been declared free of sin because of the sacrifice Jesus made on our behalf. With his death on the cross, Jesus paid our full debt to God for our rebellious ways. Christ's death substituted for ours so that all the traitors who rebelled against God's love are now reconciled with God in the heavenly kingdom. Now we know that our old sinful flesh is, ter is a terribly strong tempter in our journey through life. In so many situations we experience a strong pull to return to the sinful ways in which we were born. Just like a dog returning to its vomit. Still at the cross, the power of our old flesh was broken. The chains of sin that held us in Satan's control were shattered when Jesus died without even once falling prey to the devil's lies or mankind's natural flesh. In Christ we have been justified. That is, believers have been declared righteous for Jesus' sake before God. And thereafter, looking at all people through the intervening sacrifice of Christ, his own dear Son, God declares, I will be merciful in regard to their unrighteousness, and I will not remember their sins any longer. The Holy Spirit brought us more good news through Paul's hand. He said, and since we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that since Christ has been raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death no longer has control over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. 
Jesus has risen from the dead, victorious over Satan's sin and the grave. As our risen and ascended Savior, Jesus lives in glory everlasting at his Father's side, there to rule all things in heaven and on earth for our everlasting good. What this really means for us is that connected with Jesus by faith, we too have the upper hand in the devil's war against God and mankind. Satan can no longer threaten us with the accusations of guilt. His temptations also ring hollow, for God has withheld nothing good from us, even sacrificing his own beloved son so that we are cleansed of all guilt and justified in God's eternal court rule. <clears throat> My friends, death entered this world because of sin. Because sin has been conquered, death's hold over those who walk with Jesus has also been destroyed. St. John wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, My children, I write these things to you so that you will not sin. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate before the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sin, and not only for ours, but also for the whole world. St. Paul wrote likewise in our sermon text, Death no longer has control over Jesus. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, also consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Earlier in this sermon, I made what may have sounded like a strange statement to you. For I said that there is a death I want you to pursue based on Paul's writing in this text. I certainly don't want you to pursue physical, spiritual, or eternal death. But remembering that death is a separation, the Holy Spirit urges all believers to separate themselves from sin. He exhorts us to die to sin as you live in Christ. Now naturally, you might be asking how we can die to sin. We strive for this separation by avoiding sin in everything we do. We live to love God and neighbor with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. We strive to avoid those temptations that we know lead us into sin. At the same time, the honest believer knows we always shall fall short of the holiness God requires for us to enter his kingdom. That is, we always fall short on our own merit. <clears throat> but that is why we have a Savior. That is why God connected you with your Savior in the cleansing flood of baptism. Your sanctification came to you as you were baptized by faith, or as you were justified by faith. Unlike justification, which unites us with God in peace, sanctification is an ongoing process through which the Holy Spirit is working to keep you in repentance and faith so that you remain connected to, with Jesus and consequently at peace with God unto life everlasting. And therefore, we die to sin as we strive to obey God's commands, as we love our neighbors as Christ loved us. But especially, we, we die, die to sin as we live in Jesus' loving care. You are here today hearing again what Jesus has done for you so that you stand righteous and holy before the Creator and Judge of the world. As you partake of Jesus' body and blood in the Lord's Supper, Jesus himself is testifying with his physical presence in all your senses that he died for you personally, that through his sacrifice he has separated you from eternal death and the devil's accusations. Now many people will tell you that you must repent to, to be, be saved. saved. Rightly understood, this is true. <clears throat> However, repentance isn't just saying you are sorry for your sins. Repentance is a continual turning away from sin to trusting in Jesus as your Savior, to trust in the one Son of God who took away all your sins and made you righteous before the Holy One. 
Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. It is through faith in Jesus Christ that you die to sin as you live in Christ. Amen. Now, now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, in connection with his blood, which established the eternal, eternal testament, may he equip you with every good thing to do his will, as he works in us what is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we now join in confessing our holy faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, <coughs> of the dead, and the life of the world to come. strength, our refuge, and our rock. Do not be deaf to your people. 
but hear us as we lift up our hands and prayers toward your most holy sanctuary in heaven through the meditation, mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. God of all conquered, by the death of your Son, you reconciled the world to yourself and made peace between God and man. Give us your spirit of peace and reconciliation that your people may live together in forgiveness and harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you gave the law that we might know your will and live as your holy people. Increase in us true fear, love, and trust in your saving word and your holy name, that we may have no other gods but you. Guide and bless all fathers and mothers, pastors and teachers, as they bring up children in the discipline and knowledge of the true faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you gave the commandments that we might live a holy life and love our neighbors as ourselves. Give us your Holy Spirit and teach us to honor authority, protect life, cherish marriage, respect possessions, defend reputations, and be content with the gifts you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of all that is good, Grant your healing and support to all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Give them also the gift of your grace to accept and bear their crosses with faith in you, that finally they would be prepared to depart this life and receive the gift of eternal life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood, you forgive our sins and bind us together in your communion of love. Grant that we also may gladly forgive the sins of our brothers and let no division among us ri arise among us gathered at your table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in holy baptism, you join your children to the death and resurrection of your Son. Bless the memory of all our loved ones who have departed in the faith and comfort all who mourn with the knowledge that being united with Christ in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you, would, else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has called us to be his own so that we may live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and host of heaven, we praise your holy name and join your glorious song.
Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, and we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve in us the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Good morning again. I am Pastor Muhlenhardt. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself before the service. I serve at English Lutheran in Cottonwood, a uh, sister church in the ELS. I thank you for uh, putting up with my uh, stumbles, if there were any, and um, having patience with me as I learn to follow your service here. But may God's rich, I don't know of any announcements unless someone has some that they need to make. So may God's richest blessings go with you throughout the week as you walk with your Savior in peace, in holiness, and with a sure hope of life everlasting. With your permission, I'll greet you in the back. Have a blessed day in the Lord.